Hello friends, I hope I'm audible and visible. Can you all give me a quick thumbs up if my audio video is fine? So welcome in this dermatology session with me, Dr. Cheshta Garwal. Now here in this session, we have another important, uh, amazing uh, series of questions. Uh, let me check if you all can hear me and my audio video is fine or not. <clears throat> Just give me a second, all of you. Can you all hear me? Let me check if, oh uh, yes, it sounds great. So welcome all of you in this dermatology session. I am Dr. Cheshta Agarwal, your knee PG educator. On an academy, we are just now having a 20% discount. That is a new scheme where if you get 20% discount on an academy using this code Cheshta10, you can easily prepare for your upcoming knee PG entrance examination. Kindly use this code Cheshta10. Okay. We have a target NEET PG batch which I have started recently and we have a NEET PG 2023 batch which is starting from July 1st. So requesting all of you to kindly go ahead and get your subscription. We are also expecting a price hike so I don't want anybody to wait. Uh, please go ahead and get your subscription. Now let us begin with our uh, discussion of the infectious disorder questions. There are a lot of questions which I wanted my students to know. So let's start our discussion. Please tell me what is the correct answer. Anybody can tell me the answer here. Asteroid bodies are seen in. Achan, can you tell me the answer? Now, asteroid bodies are nothing but the star-shaped bodies which are seen in the patients of sporotrichosis. These are star-shaped bodies which are seen in the patients of sporotrichosis. And these are the bodies which I was talking about, asteroid bodies. Can you see these star-shaped bodies? Patient of sporotrichosis will have a very classical linear spread of the disease. Because here you have lymphatic involvement. Next question. Which of the following organism causes botryomycosis? Which of the following organism causes botryomycosis? Anyone? What is the correct answer here? Candida, dermatophyte, actinomycetes or staphylococcus. Which of the following organism causes botryomycosis? The answer is staphylococcus. Please remember you have grouped cocci in the form of grape. So grape like bunch of grape like appearance you have bunch of grape like appearance and please remember it is a misnomer now parasitic infection questions which disease is caused by the following organism can you see this is a little short and a broad uh, pediculosis mite this is a cause for pediculosis, pubis. Now pediculosis is the parasitic infection of the skin by lice and we have three types. Pediculosis pubis is a little broader mite. Can you see a little short and broad, little short and broad. While capitis and corporis is long and thin. So if you look at this image, this is short and broad and that is why it is a patient of pediculosis pubis. Clear? Now let's move to the next question. What is the treatment of choice of pediculosis corporis?
What is the treatment of choice for pediculosis corpus? Anyone? Three application of BHC, four application of BHC, disinfection of all the clothing or DDT application. Please remember pediculosis corporis is the infection of the skin. And it the louse remains in the clothing. And that's, that is why if you have to treat these patients, you have to treat or disinfect the clothes. The louse remains in the clothing and that is why the treatment is disinfection of the clothes. What is a Vaga bond disease? Vaga bond disease is nothing but another name for pediculosis corporis. Very nice, it is nothing but another name for pediculosis corporis. Next question. Anyone? What is the answer here? A six month old female presented with multiple papules and exudative lesions on the face, scalp, trunk, few vesicles on palm and soles for two weeks. His mother has a history of itchy lesions. What is the most likely diagnosis? The correct answer of this question is scabies, infantile eczema, infantile seborrheic dermatitis or impetico contagiosa, it is scabies. Now please remember the scabies which is a sarcopta scabies infection, it is a parasite which is a water wash disease. Mainly occur in a patient with poor hygiene, poor or low socioeconomic condition or with overcrowding. Now what are the clinical features? The patient clinically presents with itching which is worse at night with a characteristic positive family history. On close inspection of these individuals, you will see some burrows. The common sites are the wrist, the web space, the scrotum of the patients. In children or in infant, you see secondary eczematization as well as you will see involvement of palm, sole plus the scalp. So if you read the question again, the question clearly mentioned that this is a six month old infant with involvement of scalp, face, few vesicles, very very characteristic of scabies. Is that clear to all of you? Can I get a quick thumbs up from everyone? Nice. Let's move to the next question. Which of the following is incorrect regarding the nodular scabies? Which of the following is incorrect regarding the nodular scabies? Which of the following is incorrect regarding the nodular scabies? Very nice. The correct answer of this question is option number 2. Nodular scabies is a type of scabies which usually occurs on the scrotum. And because of excessive itching, patients develop some nodular lesions over the scrotum. Now they are also seen on the groin and the penile shaft. It is nothing but an hypersensitivity reaction. And please remember for treating this you have to give intralesional steroids. These are the three very very important features about nodular scabies. So the answer is option number two. You are right Ashma. Next question. A 
A six-year-old boy was diagnosed with Down syndrome, present with large warty crust on the hands and feet. Severe fissuring scaling of the skin is present over the buttock. What is the possible diagnosis? <clears throat> Anyone? So patient with Down syndrome present with scaling and crusting. Anyone? Now in the patients of Down syndrome there is severe fissuring crusting. The lesions present over the buttock. The correct answer of this question is option number 4. It is a severe form of scabies known as Norwegian scabies. It is a severe form of scabies which is known as Norwegian scabies which usually occurs in a patient with mental illness. Now what happens in these individuals? The sense of itching is lost or missing. So you will not have any sense of itching and because of which the scabies keep on developing or multiplying. And because there is no sense of itching and there is a very large count of the scabies mite, the patient develops crusted type of the lesions and that is why this is known as crusted scabies. It is considered to be the most severe type of scabies. Next question. Very, very nice. Now, which of the following statement is true regarding scabies? 15% permethrin drug of choice? No, it is 5% which is drug of choice. So, this becomes a wrong statement. Topical sulfur can be given in the infant. So, again, this is wrong. Oral ivermectin act as a nerve synapse utilizing GABA. This is true. It actually works on GABA gated chloride channels. And topical lindane is safe, again it is false, it cannot be, topical lindane cannot be given in children or pregnant females. It cannot be given in children or the pregnant females. So which of the following statement regarding this KBs is true? The answer is option number 3, the only incorrect statement. Which among the following is the oral medication used in treatment of scabies? Which among the following is the oral medication? used in the treatment of scabies, GBHC, Lindane, Ivermectin or Elbendazole. Which among the following is the oral medication used in treatment of scabies? The only oral drug which is available with us is Ivermectin. Very nice Mehbu, Dr. Adi, Akansha, Ashima. Which among the following is the drug of choice for treatment of scabies in pregnancy? So we are doing the questions from the parasitic infections and mainly from scabies. So what is the answer if you have a pregnant patient and you have to give the treatment, please remember the answer to this question is option number 2. Permethrin is the drug of choice whether it is pregnant, whether it is lactating, whether it is HIV positive, for any such cases you have to give the treatment option number. Child has multiple itchy papular lesions on genitals, fingers, similar lesions are also present in the younger brother, which of the following is the most probable answer? Ekancha, Mehbu, Dr. Abhi. Tell me what is the answer.
Anybody can tell me the correct answer here. Very nice. The answer to this question is scabies. Very characteristic description of papular lesions on the genitalia finger and a positive family history. Scabies which is an infection of the skin is caused by sarcoptus scabies and this is an example of waterborne, water washed, water based or water related disease. Scabies an infection of skin is caused by sarcoptus scabies is an example of waterborne, water washed, water based, water related. Very nice the answer is this is a water washed disease. Nodular scabies is found in web spaces, axilla, abdomen, scrotum, abhi, akansha, ashima, Nodular scabies is found in web spaces of finger, axilla, abdomen and scrotum. Any problem? Yes, very nice. The answer is option number 4, scrotum. And I told you that this is a hypersensitivity reaction to the mite. Ivermectin is indicated in the treatment of syphilis, scabies, tuberculosis or dermatophytosis. Ivermectin is indicated in treatment of Ivermectin is indicated in treatment of syphilis, scabies, tuberculosis or dermatophytosis. Very nice, Ashima, Mebu, Akansha, Sharma. As this is a very clear cut question, as we are reading this KB, so this has to be option number two. Which is the most severe form of scabies? Norwegian scabies, nodular scabies, generalized scabies, or animal scabies? Which of the following is considered to be the most severe variety of scabies? Norwegian, nodular, generalized, or animal scabies? Very nice, Abhi, Mahboob. The most severe form of scabies is Norwegian. And I told you that this is also known as crusted scabies because the sense of itching is lost and there is a lot of secondary eczematization, thick lesions which look like crusted lesions. Next question. A 12 year old boy have a gradually progressing plaque on the buttock for the last 3 years. The plaque was 15 cm in diameter, annular in shape with crusting in duration at the periphery and scarring at the center. What is the most likely diagnosis? Anyone, what is the most likely diagnosis here? So a 12 year old boy has a gradually progressive plaque on the buttock for the last 3 years. Here the plaque has a very very characteristic, the plaque has, just give me a second, yes. The plaque has a very very characteristic annular center with crusting. There is atrophy of the center and there is activity of the periphery. Whenever they say such lesion which shows activity and scarring both together, this has to be a case of cutaneous TB. This has to be a case of cutaneous TB. Please remember, tuberculosis of skin corresponds to the 10% of the extra pulmonary tuberculosis. It corresponds to 10% of the total extra pulmonary tuberculosis. The pathology depends upon the immunity of host and route of entry. And depending upon that, we have different type. For example, TB canker is an example of exogenous infection with naive immunity. Tuberculosis veruca cutis is exogenous infection when a patient is immune. Similarly, for endogenous spread, we have lupus vulgaris, scrofuloderma. And with low immunity, it is malaria tuberculosis, orificial or TB gamma. While we have some of the tuberculates, which is very, very important, like lichen sclerophyllosorum. Papillonecrotic and erythema nodosum. How does 
lupus vulgaris look like? Like this. You have an annular plaque, scaling, scarring, and activity all together. And when you do the dioscopy, you will see a very, very characteristic apple jelly nodules. Which is the most common type of cutaneous TB? Which is the most common type of cutaneous TB? What is the most common type of cutaneous TB? Lupus vulgaris, scrofuloderma, TBVC or iridema induratum. Remember the answer to this question of most common type of cutaneous TB is lupus vulgaris. Wherever you see this word lupus vulgaris, the meaning is most common. Which of the following is our tuberculate? Which of the following is our tuberculate? Lichen scrofulosorum, lichen netidus, lichen aureus or erythema nodosum. Which of the following are tuberculates? Anyone? So which of the following are tuberculates? We have three types and let me show you the images. Tuberculates are nothing but the hypersensitivity reaction to the TB or M. leprae present somewhere inside. So it's just a hypersensitivity reaction. When we do a biopsy, the bacilli are absent and it usually clears with ATT. So look at this. Three types, lichen scrofulosorum, papulonecrotic type and iridema induratum type. So these are the three types and that is why the answer here is option number one. Next question. Anyone? A young boy presented with lesions over his right buttock which had peripheral scaling and central clearing with scarring. What is the investigation of choice? What is the investigation of choice? Please remember the answer to this question was for TB you do skin biopsy and you will see a very characteristic tuberculoid granuloma. And this is actually a description of lupus vulgaris. Which of the following is true about lupus vulgaris? Ashima, Abhi, Mehboop, First Life, Akansha. True about lupus vulgaris are all except apple jelly nodules, TB of skin, also known as scrofuloderma, ATT is helpful. The answer is option number 3. Lupus vulgaris is different from scrofuloderma. How does scrofuloderma look like? Look at this image. This is the neck of a patient and you can see that there is a lot of nodules and the superficial skin is crusted. Now here what happens that these patients will have a very classical underlying involvement of the cervical lymph node and the overlying skin has an undermined edges with a very bluish margin. So this is nothing but a cervical TB, the lymph node of the TB which is involving the skin overlying it and it is a very frequent type of cutaneous TB in children. This is an image of tuberculosis veruca cutis 
and this is an image of lupus vulgaris so these three are different entities you cannot uh, consider them as the alternates of each other so please remember the correct answer of this question is option number 3 the correct answer also known as scrofuloderma is the involvement of the sweat glands dermal appendages hair follicle with epithelioid granulomas are typical of which of the following although it is seen in all of them all the type of tb but involvement of the appendages is more common in one of them you have to tell me which is that one involvement of the sweat glands dermal appendages hair follicle with epithelioid granulomas are typical of which of the following lichen sclerophyllosorum miliary tb papillonecrotic tb and lupus vulgaris very nice all of you the correct answer of this question is option number 1 it is a type of tuberculid which very classically have involvement of the sweat glands or dermal appendages so option number 1 is the correct answer tuberculid are seen in tuberculids are seen in lupus vulgaris scrofuloderma lichen scrofulosorum and erythema nodosum and erythema nodosum tuberculids are seen in tuberculids are seen in very nice ashima akansha mehboob dr abhi tuberculids is again hypersensitivity reaction three types lichen scrofulosorum papillonecrotic and erythema induratum which skin tb involves the skin after involving the lymph node very simple straight forward question which skin tb involves the lymph node followed by involvement of the skin the correct answer is scrofuloderma next mycobacterial which causes the skin ulcer which is the mycobacterial here the variety or the name of the ulcer which you develop secondary to mycobacterium is a buruli ulcer and please remember the common cause of the buruli ulcer is mycobacterial ulcer can anybody tell me which disease occurs secondary to mycobacterium marinum infection if you are attending my sessions on the special class it is the swimming pool granulomas it is the swimming pool granulomas or fish tank granulomas swimming pool granulomas and the fish tank granulomas so i think we are already done with this fish tank granuloma is a feature of mycobacterium marinum infections okay next which of the following causes buruli's ulcer again we are done with this it is the mycobacterium ulcerans so these two questions we have already discussed so just revising it here so that is how the swimming pool granuloma looks like you have linear lesions which can be nodule which can ulcerate and why it is linear because it spread through lymphatics buruli ulcer is something like this you have a wide spaced ulcer where you can see the underlying uh, skin or uh, sorry underlying bone sometimes the subcutaneous tissue is visible clear all of you can i get a quick thumbs up from everyone okay now moving to the next question dermatophytic infection is superficial subdermal subfacicular muscular dermatophyte infection is superficial dermatophytic infection is superficial 
because dermatophyte is a keratophilic fungus and what are the keratin rich what are the keratin rich areas in our body epidermis hair and nail epidermis hair and nail so we have two types or we have two broad categories of fungal superficial and deep we will be doing the questions from both of them superficial includes dermatophytic infections pityriasis versicolor candida and subcutaneous which includes mycetoma sporotrichosis and chromoblastomycosis so let's discuss the next question which does not cause tenia capitis which does not cause tenia capitis the answer to this question is option number 2 now tenia word wherever it comes it means you are dealing with dermato fight infection we have three type of dermatophytes one is epidermophyton trichophyton epidermophyton trichophyton and microsporum epidermophyton trichophyton and microsporums Now please remember the trichophyton affects all the three that is skin hair and nail so t of 3 and t of tri epidermophyton do not affect the hair it only affect skin and nail while microsporum do not affects the nail it affects the other two so if you remember this it would be very easy for you skin and nails are affected skin and hair is affected so tenia capitis is the fungal infection of the hair and we have discussed that epidermophyton do not affect the hair so the answer becomes option a so that is what we have discussed just now t will not t will affect all three m will not affect n and e will not affect h so that is a very important thing which you all need to remember okay this question first you do this question dermatophyte are dermatophyte are anyone they are sporothrix tenia versicolor chromoblastomycosis or trichophyton rubrum or trichophyton rubrum please remember we have discussed that only three species trichophyton epidermophyton and microsporum only three species trichophyton epidermophyton and microsporum so the answer is option number 4 how to differentiate the different species of trichophyton so please remember you mainly need to identify between the two species of trichophyton that is trichophyton rubrum for your exam point of view only this is important trichophyton rubrum and trichophyton mentegrophyte how to differentiate between the two most common type of trichophyton we will do what is known as a hair perforation test what do you mean by this test we will take the hair and we will put the hair in the colonies of both trichophyton rubrum and trichophyton mentegrophyte the colonies the sd agar of mentegrophyte and rubrum we will put one one hair now if after some time if you see the hairs with lot of pores this is known as hair perforation test 
positive if you see a lot of pores on the hairs when you put the patient under the trichophyton rubrum colonies it is called as hair perforation test positive and what is hair perforation test negative when there is no pores and you can see a smooth hair so if you have to differentiate between them please remember i'm very sorry uh, i'm very sorry i think I, uh, this is exactly opposite sorry for rubrum it is negative i'm very sorry it is negative here and it is positive here so please remember this is the other way round if you have hair perforation test positive it means it is mentegrophyte colonies okay it is mentegrophyte so that is a very easy way to differentiate among the rubrum as well as mentegrophyte any confusion dr p any confusion dr p so in mentegrophyte the hair perforation test comes positive that is the hair had lot of perforations over it in clinical dr please remember dr p clinically the t rubrum has a very dry lesion dry looking lesions and in t mentegrophyte we have erythematous inflammatory lesions erythematous inflammatory lesions let me check if i have a image which can help you for the same yes can you see this so t mentegrophyte let me just move it little below i think this will help you differentiate clinically in t mentegrophyte you will see a lot of inflammation and t rubrum it is dry more of dry when you see more scaling it is dry dr p if this is clear i request a quick thumbs up from you and if you remember there was a question which was asked in aims question paper in the past that which anti fungal you will prefer i am talking about topical when there is a lot of inflammation component so which is that anti fungal which has both anti fungal plus anti inflammatory property which is used as a very effective treatment for the trichophyton mentegrophyte lesions anyone can tell me answer it is sertaconazole so please remember sertaconazole it's a previous year aims question it possesses both anti fungal as well as anti inflammatory properties okay so we were discussing actually this question anybody can tell me the answer a 22 year old male patient with complaints of fever itching white scales in the groin for the past which of the following is the most likely causative agent which of the following is the most likely causative agent anyone very nice so the patient complains of lesions on the groin for past few months this has to be a patient with tinea cruris and in tinea cruris you should have a dermatophytic species causing it so the answer becomes option number 1 white scaly plaque in candida you will see macerated lesions you will see erythema with satellite lesions and please remember these scales are missing here these scales are missing here okay these scales are missing here next question what is the correct answer here anyone can tell me the answer here 
वेरी नाइस और थर्टी सिक्स ईयर ओल्ड फैक्ट्री वर्कर डेवलपिंग इजी लीजन इन दी ग्रोइन स्टीरोइड इज अप्लाइड विच हैव गिवन अ टेम्प्रेरी रिलीफ बट इट कीप ऑन एक्सटेंडिंग ऑन टू दी पेरी पेरी द लाइकली डायग्नोसिस हियर इज वॉट इट इज द टीनिया क्रोरिस एंड अ बेटर टर्म वुड बी टीनिया इन कॉगनीटो द बेटर टर्म वुड बी टीनिया इन कॉगनीटो द बेटर टर्म वुड बी टीनिया इन कॉगनीटो क्लियर है The better term would be tenia in cognito. Next question. The next question. A ten-year-old boy with painful bogy swelling of the scalp, multiple sinuses with purulent discharge, easily plucable hair, lymph node enlarged in the occipital region. Which one of the following would be the most helpful for diagnostic evaluation in this patient? Anyone? Biopsy, bacterial culture, KOH mount, patch test. Ashima, Mehboob, Doctor P, Sachin, Abhi. The answer is KOH mount. We have already done this question. This is a patient with Kirion. So, what are the tenia capitis? Tenia capitis is a fungal infection of the scalp, which is mainly seen before puberty. Why? Because after puberty, the sebum has antifungal property. Sebum has antifungal property. Okay. Sebum has antifungal property. We have two type of tenia. One is ectothrix where the spores are present on the surface giving it a dull gray appearance called as gray patch tenia and endothrix because of so much of spores inside you will see that the hair will break giving it a very classical appearance of black dot tenia so inside if you have spores it makes the hair fragile and if it is outside it gives a very dry gray appearance the causative agent of black dot tenia is tonsudens and violaceum and you can see the image while for the gray patch the causative agent is odoni and canis these are the two non inflammatory type we have inflammatory type which is known as kirion where mentegrophyte and verrucosum is the answer the causative agent and another one is cutulum which is the famous variety occur because of trichophyton shown lane what is the correct answer the most common organism causing tenia capitis what is the answer here am i audible and visible to all of you am i audible and visible to all of you i'm very sorry so my laptop got discharged i hope i'm audible and visible what is the most common organism causing tenia capitis the answer to this is option number 2 it is the microsporum species which is the most common cause of causing the tenia kirion is seen in kirion is seen in candida infection trichomoniasis pityriasis versicolor what is the answer very nice kirion is seen in dermatophytic infection dermatophytic infection very nice it is dermatophytic infection so these are some easy questions now let's move to the next a patient diagnosed with kirion
the patient diagnosed with kidney a severe inflammatory form what is the incorrect statement about the given lesion what is the incorrect statement about the given lesion what is the incorrect statement about the given lesion please remember the correct answer of this question is option number 3 the incorrect option for this particular condition the lesions are extremely pruritic and may be tender this is true this is actually an example of dermatophytid dermatophytid it is actually an example of dermatophytid so what is dermatophytid it is a e eruption if you remember we have discussed tuberculate where you have an infective focus where there is a lot of inflammation and from there the inflammatory markers reaches to a distant site and causes the lesion so here you have infection of the scalp here you have infection of the scalp and it has reached to the other parts it has reached to the other parts uh, like the fingertips that can be pruritic that can be tender it is an allergic reaction this is also true but please remember what did i tell you for a hypersensitivity reaction that you have to treat the primary focus of infection and in these individuals the primary focus of infection is the scalp lesion so instead of treating them locally you have to give the treatment to the fungus that is through the antifungal whether topical or oral dermatophyte can be demonstrated in the lesions yes you cannot demonstrate the dermatophyte so all are true except option number 3 all are to except option number 3 anything else please tell me what is the correct answer black dot ringworm caused by so black dot ringworm is secondary to microsporum trichophyton epidermophyton or candida very nice black dot is another name for fungal infection of the scalp and it is trichophyton violaceum and trichophyton tonsurans option number 2 eight year old child has a localized non scarring alopecia over the scalp with itching and scaling what is the diagnosis tinea barbe alopecia areata tinea capitis or lichen planus Eight year old child has a localized non secretorial alopecia over the scalp with itching and scaling. Very nice this is a patient with tinea capitis I told you that tinea capitis mainly occurs in a prepubertal individual in a child. <clears throat> Now just few images i want to show how does tinea barbe that is the uh, fungal infection of the face or the beard area look like tinea fascia you can look at the image of annular lesion on the face next question what is dobi itch what is dobi itch and where do you see this dobi itch is answer is another name for tinea cruris this can you see this is a lesion of tinea cruris also known as dobi itch or jack itch regarding athlete foot which is incorrect regarding athlete foot which is incorrect regarding athlete foot what is incorrect regarding athlete foot which is incorrect fourth toe web is commonly involved severe itching caused by team integrophyte hyperhidrosis is seen or all of the above
athlete foot which is incorrect please remember athlete foot is nothing but tinea pedis it usually occurs in the fourth toe web that is true there is severe itching associated secondary to team integral fight and you have increased sweating so all of the above is the correct answer option number 4 is correct you can see this is the tinea pedis or athlete foot and the next image is of tinea menum can you tell me tinea unguum is the dermatophytic infection of the what part nail fold nail plate periungual region or the cuticle tinea unguum is the dermatophytic infection of nail fold nail plate periungual region or the cuticle anyone very nice so this is the infection of the nail plate why it is the nail plate because i told you that dermatophyte is a keratophilic fungus it is a keratophilic fungus it is a keratophilic fungus it uh, feed on the keratin so only the keratin rich areas will be affected in these cases fine now we have few more questions all are true about dermatophyte except all are true about dermatophyte except candida albicans usually causes systemic infections dermatophyte involves superficial layers of skin microsporum does not involve the nail epidermophyton does not involve the hair which of the following is the correct statement sachin peronychia a uh, periungual chronic peronychia occurs secondary to fungal infections okay it is the inflammation of the periungual or the skin folds proximal skin fold or uh, lateral skin folds okay nail folds yes the answer to this question is option number 1 please remember candida is an infection which is superficial not systemic rest all are true clear yeah. A 22-year-old female with hyperpigmented macules, confluent patches over the chest, as seen in this image, identify the incorrect statement regarding the possible diagnosis. So, what do you think? What is having in this patient? Anyone? So, 22-year-old female presented with hyperpigmented macules, confluent patches over the chest, identify the incorrect statement. The answer to this question, which is incorrect, is option number three. Now, look at this image. This is an image of Pitreasis versicolor. You have discrete to confluent hyperpigmented or hyperpigmented lesions, mainly on the trunk. They have fine scales, and when you scratch those scales, they become more prominent, which is known as besnier sign they become more prominent on scratching them when you do a wood slab you can see a yellow color fluorescence you can see a yellow color fluorescence and if they are not taken care it can actually you know recur again usually it occurs whenever there is increased sweating during those seasons when there is increased sweating the pitreasis versicolor lesion recurs So, what is the causative species? It is Malassezia furfur or Malassezia globosa. It is Malassezia furfur or Malassezia globosa. They release azelaic acid, which causes dilution of the pigment. It can even stimulate the pigment production in few cases. And when we do a KOH mount, we can see a very characteristic spaghetti and meatball appearance. A very characteristic spaghetti and meatball. Woods lamp. The color is yellow. Woods lamp. The color is yellow. May I make shows Cobinus phenomenon? No. Please remember, Pitreasis versicolor has nothing to do with the Cobinus phenomenon. No, not at all. Incorrect. Okay. Please answer the next question. 
a 21 year old men with small hypopigmented macules on the upper chest back for the last 3 month he had a similar lesion on one year ago with subsided with the treatment what is the most appropriate investigation to confirm the diagnosis what is the most appropriate investigation to confirm the diagnosis anyone The correct answer of this question is option number 1. This is a patient with pityriasis versicolor with a very classical perifollicular arrangement of these plaques. They have fine scales and on scratching these lesions you can see that the scales becomes more prominent. And when you do a Keoch mount what is see you see a very characteristic spaghetti or meatball appearance. next the following drug is indicated in treatment of pityriasis versicolor ketoconazole gesofalvin metronidazole chloroquine the following drug is uh, required for the treatment of pityriasis versicolor very nice the answer is the azole group works very well so ketoconazole is the best possible answer next question is on your screen which of the following organism causes a disease which presents as a hard black nodule over the scalp and hair piedra hote trichosporon bigeli corine bacteria tinius or trichophyton tonsurans so which of the following organisms causes a disease which presents as hard black nodule over the scalp hair amazing one of you very nice very well done the answer to this question is option number 1 and this is a very classical example of black piedra it's a very classical example of black piedra now what is this black piedra it is a fungal infection of the hair where you see small black hard nodules on the hair and when you comb the hair you can feel that greedy sensation you can feel that greedy sensation the next is white piedra where instead of black you develop a white nodule over them and they are very soft so we have black piedra and we have white piedra you have piedra hote and trichosporum bigeli piedra hote and trichosporum bigeli so with this we are done with the today's session so thank you all of you and let me show you that uh, slide again So we are currently going on with a 20% discount. So I would be requesting all my students to kindly go ahead and get an academy subscription. The offer is only valid till 30th. That is tomorrow is the last day. I would be requesting all of you to use my code Cheshta10 and get the an academy subscription. This code will give you 20% discount right now. there are new batches which is starting so that would be very very helpful for all of you like tnd batches for the repeaters and we are also expecting a price hike so whatever it is kindly use the code so that you can avail your an academy discount without any delay so thank you everyone i hope these sessions are beneficial for you again we'll be meeting tomorrow at 8:30 am in the morning if you have any doubt you can just post on the chat section please follow me on my an academy profile you can also watch my special classes use this code to watch or unlock the free classes and you can even use the same code for unlocking the test series as well as to get 20% discount on the an academy app so thank you all of you good day and take care